Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is attorney Sharp Rally. We're going to talk about OPT, the new OPT rule, and as it compared to the old OPT 17 month. And uh, since this is uh, hopefully going to pass soon, uh, as you know, there is a potential that uh, on March 10, we are going to have a publication. Well, not a potential, there will be, uh, it will be published and hopefully it will become law before May 10. So in, um, in, this, in the light of this, uh, many students have asked me to prepare something to explain uh, what do you see in the changes of the OPT. Uh, well, first of all, this new OPT rule, as we mentioned it, uh, of course it's not final, but pretty much it's final based on what it is on the Federal Register right now. Um, for those who don't know, the 17-month uh, uh, OPT rule was invalidated by a court and ultimately the government had to go to the Federal Register where they, they, were able, they had to publish the new OPT rule, get public comments and then make it rule. Luckily all this uh, have been done now. Now we're waiting for the rule to really come out and become law. It's under the improving and expanding training opportunities for F1 non-immigrant students with STEM degrees and cap gap relief for all eligible F1 students. So I have this link on the bottom of this video where we basically talk about that. So it's on my website also, Pirali Law. It's, it is very important because I'm getting so many questions I wanted to answer those. And I'm going to try my best actually to cover uh, in, uh, as much as possible. First of all, we're going to outline the, the, the similarities or basically uh, the similarities that, that is with the new OPT, the, the 24 month compared to the 17 month. Uh, the E-Verify and reporting requirements for the STEM OPT employers will stay the same and the require, reporting requirements for STEM OPT students also will stay the same. Those are the only two things that are, are going to stay the same. But in summary, what is going to change for one, number one, the length of the OPT, uh, number one. And not only the length of the OPT, it's also that people will be able to obtain kind of two STEM degrees now, a uh, two STEM OPT of 24 months, uh, even if it is not related to the second degree. What it means is basically, for example, and again, this is still a uh, rule kind of in a proposed stage until it becomes law. But from what I understand from the proposition, it seems like you can have two 24 months and um, and uh, you can basically kind of take one um, 24 month, for example, if you do one in biotechnology and the other one in engineering, you might be able to take two uh, STEM on those uh, OPT uh, of 24 month and that will, even if you work in biotechnology, so basically you can continue like almost 48 months. But again, implementation of that, we don't know how it's going to work. So until we see it happening completely, we cannot really pronounce, but that's what's being proposed under this new rule of improving and expanding training opportunities for F1 students. And uh, second, the mentoring, prog uh, the mentoring program. This is another change and training program. This is going to be the complication of many, many employers because many of them will have to basically mentor and, and, and train their, their STEM OPT students and uh, they have to report it. There will be a form that will be attached to that and they will have to fill that and uh, hopefully as, as it goes by, I know many of employers are hiring a lot of people on OPT so we will start helping people on OPT a preparation of those, of those forms. And um, another thing that is very important of course is uh, but they put the safeguard for U.S. workers in re related fields. All this problem of, of OPT being sued and everything is actually related to that, that clause. So basically one of the things that would be very, very important for the U.S. workers to demonstrate, they will have to have uh, sure that the, they have sufficient resources and trained personnel to, uh, to, to provide appropriate mentoring and training in connection with the specified opportunity. The employer will not terminate layoff a f uh, furlough to any full um, uh, part-time, temporary or permanent U.S. workers as a result of providing the STEM OPT to the student and the student's opportunity assists the student in attaining his or her training objectives. In simple terms, you will need to, the employer will have to give a declaration, basically an affidavit, 
um, and an attestation that they will not lay off uh, U.S. workers, including H-1Bs, by the way, and they will they will not um, they will also have the means and the people to train the students. You cannot just say you'll take them, put them there. This is where it's going to get a, another part where it's going to be tricky for employers. This is a little bit the ugly and the good part for U.S. workers on this. Um, and then the other thing is uh, the school accreditation and employer side visits. Well, um, the, 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 the idea of this is um, they're going to limit uh, the eligibility from schools uh, that, uh, that are accredited uh, in the Department of Education and um, until they do a, a, a side visit or they will do constant side visit. Here it's another important clause for many of my listeners because I know a lot of them go to those uh, visa mail schools unfortunately. Even though they're going genuinely, they're studying, they end up by, by being at the mercy of them. And all those schools that you know on the blacklist, and I'm not going to maintain, uh, mention them here, you will, you will see that they will basically go after them. So not go after them, but they will come and check. So just being accredited will not be enough. That's what it means. You will still have to prove that you, you are in compliance. And the compliance part is the part which is becomes next. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. So then um, we will see how the, the USCIS and the Department of Homeland Security and ICE are going to deal with that. We just hope that it's not going to be another tri valley University kind of bloodbath. So let us see how, what happens here. And um, in addition, the, uh, the compliance requirements, they, they would revise the number of days that an F1 student may remain unemployed during the practical training period. As you know, uh, the program allows a student to be unemployed up to 90 days during he, uh, her or he, his initial. As you know, the, the, if you have the regular OPT, you, if 90 days you don't work, as long as you don't pass 90 days, you don't lose your OPT. As for STEM, it becomes 30 days. And um, the proposed rule actually um, will allow basically a 90 day maximum period of uh, unemployment during the uh, initial period which is basically the regular one, but will allow another 60 days uh, for the students in the 24 month. This is a good news actually for the, for the students because another 60 days, uh, instead of 30 days, 60 days you can be an, um, unemployed, find another job, etc. And, um, and of course, the, the, the thing that we mentioned earlier, what are the commonalities with the old, um, uh, um, old 17 month STEM extension, you will have to do e-verify and uh, the requirements for reporting will be the same and also the cap gap. The cap gap will not change. As you know, if you beneficiary of an OPT which goes above uh, April 1st, you will be able to um, basically continue getting what we call, you can continue working if you file an H-1B and H-1B is, is pending and uh, you can continue working until October 1st. But of course, if you are prior to the April 1st, your OPT expires prior to April 1st, and if it is within the 60 days of the grace period, uh, for example, if it is expires around, around March, uh, March 15, you're still within that 60 days, you will be able to stay in the United States legally while your H1B is pending, but you cannot work until October 1st. A distinction between those two is very important. And, um, and of course, um, Basically, to recap right now, the, the rule will, will give 24 months and will allow a second STEM extension, basically. So you will have another 24 months if you have a different degree, plus the degree even as long as it's a STEM degree. But the only difference is that you will not, uh, you can own also work, for example, I said biotechnology and engineering. You can continue working in biotechnology even you get a, a degree in, uh, in, um, in engineering. So, and then also they will, they will require students to find a condition of employment. That's another issue which is bigger. Uh, they will pretty much kind of, I don't know if they're going to start doing like an LCA on H-1B, but they will have to pay pr probably the prevailing wage to the students. Many employers have seen it fit, unfortunately, to use OPT student and pay them any amount of money. Uh, but now there will be some kind of compliance and guidelines and uh, we are going to get more news on that part. They will have to pay a certain amount of money. And then the other thing they will have to do is 
is a mentoring requirement for students. Uh, the mentoring will uh, basically be the part which another uh, employers, especially if you're a consulting firm, how do you monitor the students? So we're going to see the practicality of it once it comes out. And right now, this is a recap I have on it. And uh, this is Attorney Sharp Rally. And keep uh, si subscribe to our channel, by the way. I'm going to put update on, on the YouTube channel because I think this is the best way to communicate with people. At the same time, I will try my best to do some presentation to help you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And anything I told you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any question. Thank you.